What's up guys, my name is Michael Lane. welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to do another league code challenge. This is called Hamming Distance. Hamming Distance between two integers is the number of positions at which the corresponding bits are different. So given two integers, X and Y, calculate the Hamming Distance. So what does this mean by bits is that, well if you convert the number 1 into its corresponding binary, 0001, and convert 4 into its corresponding binary, 0100, the distance between the difference in bits, as you can see here, this distance is 1, and then this distance, which that is different, right, 1, 0, this is in the second distance, the second bit that is different, that's the distance from here is 2, right, uh, my, my bad, it's also 1, so in total it's 2, see, the distance between the here and here to the different bits is 2. So, I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to do it, and then come back here when you can't figure it out after one to two hours. Alright guys, so I'm going to explain how to do it now. Well, what I did was, I used two, uh, two pass, it means I went over it twice in order to count difference in bits. But, you could do however the way you like it, as long as you are able to count the how many corresponding bits are different. So first, what I did was I created a bit set, and, oh uh, wait, hold up, let me just see, this is how you create a bit set, right, let me just, let's just, let's just show it to you guys, alright, a bit set is basically just a, an array, but it tells you the number, it's only filled with bits, so this is more efficient than having an array of integers, because then, for an integer, it would have more size, if you understand what I'm saying. So if I just use a bit set, bit sets only have zeros and ones, so it makes storing the binary of each integer much easier. So what I did was, whoops, okay, that was my solution, but here. So first of all, we have to see that our maximum possible number is 2 to the 31, so I filled my bit set with a length of... 32 and this is going to be my x in binary and then I create another bit set 32 y in binary reason is because our maximum is 31 so 2 to the 31 so I created the bits of 32 because you know just to make sure that nothing is too over the top because I have to include the zeroth bit also you know Okay, so what do I do? So I'm going to loop from i equals to 0. I'm going to go 32 bits, okay? And go all 32 bits, and I'm going to fill up my bit set. So how do I fill up my bit set? I do x binary at i, and what am I going to do? I need to get the corresponding bit, all right, that I'm currently Add. So this is a way how do you to convert a number into its binary equivalent into a bit set. So what do I have to do? Well, I need to shift it left by i. Okay, this is going to shift the value by whatever number it is, right? So here it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, up to 31. The last number is going to be 31. And I'm going to shift it that many times in order to get each place for each bit, right? So in, in this case, let's say I had 1, and this was the binary. Well, if I want to fill up each value here, I have to shift this by the certain number of places, bit shifting. So by sh sh bit shifting, essentially this is equivalent to uh, multiplying by 2, I think, or dividing by 2. Uh, let me see. Bit shifting equivalent. I'll just show you what this does, just to make sure that you know what you're doing. So if you were to, let's see, where's multiply, multiply, multiply. No, shift this way. Logical shift right here. So in terms of logical shifting, it is the equivalent of 
If you shift left by one, you move the bits into its certain location, which is essentially the same effect. Shifting left by n bits on a number has the effect of multiplying it by two to the n. Okay, so if I were to shift it, the shifting it left by whatever number of bits for each one, I will basically get whatever the certain number of bits I'm at. And then if I end it by one, that will basically get me the least significant bit. Do you guys understand? So in this case, if I want this number to be, I want the zero to store and the zero index, right? If I shift it one, two, three, four, five, four times, I will be able to get whatever the zero is. And if you keep shifting it, how many number of times you would be able to get these values for each, each bit in order to convert it to its equivalent binary, okay? So this is this is the code how you would do it. Ending it by one basically take t tells me the l the last significant bit. All right. So it's essentially just trying to find this one, and then once it shifts it, then I won't have this anymore. Like this would be gone. The one would be gone. Then I shift it again. Then I have the zero. Then zero zero. So this is a, this is the equivalent of converting this number into its equivalent binary, essentially. Okay. So that's the basic gist of it. You could put it this into your compiler and then see what it does. That's that's another way to go how to learn this. Okay. And you could print out which whatever value it is and it would tell you. Okay, so now once I have all my numbers converted to a binary into my equivalent bit form, I'm going to go from the last bits, 31 i is greater than or equal to zero i minus minus what am i going to do i am going to count create a count equals zero okay and what am i going to do i am going to check if x binary at i is not equal to y binary at i i am going to increase my counter because i want to check the corresponding bits are different count the corresponding bits are different so this is how you would do it I go through every bit I check if it's not equal then I increase my counter once that's done I am going to return my count so yeah let's run the code let's see if there's any compile errors Oh, a compiler error. Okay. Cannot be restricted to an int. Hmm. Let's see. By 30 places cannot be restricted to int. So what did... Let's see. Let's just see what my previous solution did. Oh, I shifted right. Whoops. I'm supposed to shift right. My bad. Because Okay, so if you shift right, shifting left means you get rid of the whatever the leftmost. Okay, so basically, if I have a number of shift right, okay, uh, okay, I'm going to explain this again. Okay, so the number one, it's equivalent binary zero, 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 one, right? If I shift right by I, which is like zero, then one, then two, then three, then four, five, up to 31, basically I am, and I end up by one, I fill my array up, my bit array, with the corresponding value that it's at. Okay. So here, if I shift it right, let's say I shift this right. So I would, and I end up by one, I get the last significant bit. So here I'm going to end up by, let's say I shift it right, I get ended by one. So that's going to fill this array at this position with one. Then I shift it right, then this one is going to be gone. So my new array, my new number of bits would be this. And then once I end it by one, this is going to be gone again. And I fill that up in here. Then after the next pass, you have zero, zero. I shift it right again. I get this, end it by one. I get the, the when you end it by one, you get the least significant bit. 
right? So then after this, I fill that here. Shift it to get right again. And then I have zero, then I fill that here. And then once I shift it right again, this is gone. And that would fill your array up with this, these number of values. So let me just explain it one more time, just in case if you guys don't understand what shifting left and right does. So let's say I have, well, that is really small. Okay, let's so have this. In the, the equivalent form in binary, which is how all these numbers are represented, is this. I want to fill this up in my new array. Okay, every time you shift a, a number right by how many, how many spaces of n, you get rid of the last significant bit. All right, so if I shift it right by one, it gets rid of that. Shift I do two, I get rid of these two. So once if I shift it right by one and and it by one, so if I shift it right by i, which is zero or one and two, and then and it by one, I get the least significant bit. So here I, I get the least significant bit, it would be one. Then when, once you shift it right, every, every bit gets shift right, right? So then this becomes zero, 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 because this last one's gone when you shift it right. We end up by one, I get this significant bit. I store it here. Then I shift it right again. This, and this, this would become gone. So then I have zero, zero. Shift it right again, and it by one, get to my least significant bit. Zero, shift it right. This is gonna become zero. Shift it right, uh, yeah. Shift it right again, and it by one, get this least significant bit. This will become nothing. And I have that my bit that has my binary number. So that's basically what this is doing. Once I do that, I have a counter, and then I check if the ones that are not equal, I count plus plus and I return count. Now it should work. Yeah. Submit it. And it gets accepted. So yeah, this is how you would do this is my way of doing it. I had to do two for loops. But there is an easier way to do this that I found another solution that this guy did online. Okay, his way is basically he still has a counter. What he's going to do is he's going to while numbers are nothing, right? He's going to and it by one to get its least significant bit. And why is one and it by one to get least significant bit? If they're not equal, he increases his counter. Then he's going to shift right by one and that will get rid of the values again and then if he once he keeps doing that he maintains a counter the x and y bits when number of bits will be gone and then he returns the counter of r this is much easier because then you're not filling the array uh, having a bit set you're filling it with your binary values this is basically just doing having your counter while it's doing it okay so this is much more efficient so i'm going to type that solution with you guys just in case if you don't remember you have a counter this is going to represent the number of bits that are different while x and y are still have not like still not equal to zero while it still have some number of bits what we're going to do is we are going to check if x and y this gets my least significant bit is not equal to y and 1 then we're going to increase our counter after that we're going to shift shift uh, x is going to equal to x shift right by 1 y is going to equal to y shift right by 1 then after we return count run the code it passed this and it got accepted so if you understand what I'm doing I'm shifting right right the last significant bit I ending it by one I get the last significant bit and then I increase my count if the bits are not the same the last significant bits are not the same Shifting it right by one essentially means gets rid of the the bit that I was checking, the last bit I was checking, and then I have the next continue the next bit. So yeah, that's how you do it. Rate, comment, subscribe. Hope you guys un understood what I was doing.